My name is Dorothy Galridge Challenor Burnham, and the date of birth is March 22nd, 1915. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, at Brooklyn Hospital. My, my mother was dark-skinned, and my father, I believe that his grandfather was the one who was the plantation owner and brought the name Chalinor into our family. But my dad, my dad probably was not proud of it, so he did not talk about his white relative. And, you know, seeing that he was fair-skinned, I asked him a couple of times about who was white in his family, and he never, he never answered. My mother says, stop, stop persecuting your father. He's not going to answer that question. His younger brother, Robert, went to, uh, went to Panama when they were building the canal. And at that time, he was too young to be part of the building, but uh, they had other jobs in Panama to serve the people who were doing, you know, in the restaurants and so forth. So he got jobs in Panama and saved enough money to pay his way to the States and then enrolled at Howard University. And um, at that time, I think he had only two years to go through Howard University and then into dental school. Both my parents grew up in Barbados and came to this country when they were in their 20s, early 20s. There was a, a West Indian community, and my cousin, whom my mother stayed with, had people coming in and out of her house. She had many, she had four or five other people living in the house on Adams Street. And my father, I guess, visited that house to see other people, and he met my mother there. And that's how they met, and uh, they got married. Elementary school in PS 11, as I recall, there were a couple of classes where there were only two or three black students, because we were actually in a white neighborhood. On Clinton Avenue and Washington Avenue, there were actual mansions. In fact, some of the uh, tour buses still go by to show the people those mansions. And Waverly Avenue was the block in which their servants lived and where their um, where, what do you, what do you, stables were for their horses. And so Waverly Avenue always had working class people and a few of those working class people were blacks. And when, and when we moved in, there were maybe, oh, I, I can't remember, but it, of course the black community grew on Waverly and then other areas in that same neighborhood became black. I was not there by accident. My mother chose the block we lived in because it was next door to the school and she could monitor the teachers as well as her daughter. And um, it was, at that time, PS11 was a really good school, they had very fine teachers. And because my mother was there, they knew they took an interest in me. <laughs> they knew if they didn't, she would be there. And uh, I went to elementary school and then went into girls' high school. And at girls' high school, I, I met a woman who was teaching physics and got she got me truly interested in science at that point in high school. And that's when I decided to make, you know, science the area that I was going to register in. And uh, also there were people, there were a couple of people there who were interested in the civil rights movement. So then when I went on to Brooklyn College, and it was because, you know, because of my interest in science, I got good enough grades to get into Brooklyn College. And at Brooklyn College, I met people who, you know, who um, were good in teaching the sciences, and also I met a couple of, of the teachers at Brooklyn College who were truly interested in um, civil rights. So that my, my major was microbiology, in which I couldn't get a job when I graduated because of the depression. And we, uh, you know, I was working on different 
clerical jobs, the only jobs I could get. And then when I married Louis in 1941, that's when I moved south to work uh, full time in the movement. Louis was, he was an extraordinary speaker, a speaker and an organizer, and he related very well to people. He was friends with, he had many, many friends from some of them from time he was in school and others whom he had met in the youth movement were asking for equality in the in the school system in the in the uh, in the public school system and were asking also for the right to vote and uh, and uh, you know eventually for the end of segregation in the in all the systems, the libraries and the uh, the buses and trolley cars, etc. And when we had uh, demonstrations, we would go to the we would go to coal coal mines and hand out leaflets about different things, voting rights and things like that. I remember going and meeting Henry Mayfield, and we'd pass out the materials. It was you know the fight was for equal pay equal work for the um, workers in both the steel and, and the coal mining industry. But at that time, the, uh, uh, the Southern Negro Youth Congress was more radical than the NAACP, so that the relationships were not all that, you know, close, as we were, you know, more, more demanding and taking part in picket lines and things like that, which the NAAC was not, not doing. I met uh, Paul Robeson. I think it was the first time was in um, in South Carolina. All the people who were performers or speakers who came to Birmingham could not stay in the hotels, so they would stay at different people's houses. And one year, uh, Marian Anderson came to sing, and she had to stay in a friend's house, and uh, she sang and she sang before a segregated audience. Paul would not speak, sing before a segregated audience. Well, I continued to work with the, you know, mainly with the women's organizations, and I was very active in the Tom Jones campaign, which, and the organization he, he and others founded to get him elected, continued to work in the community for, you know, helping with the civil rights movement. So I continued with that organization and also joined the Women for Racial and Economic Equality. I don't remember what year I joined with them, but they were an organization struggling for the rights of women to vote and for the rights of black women and the black community. And in, in art, I don't, I got interested. My, my husband is a violinist. And he started the children doing, he said, well, start them early. And so when Claudia was a little girl, we went over to Henry Street. She, she started with music lessons, and she started with the clarinet. Then um, Margaret followed, and Margaret followed with the violin, and, and the children started with their, with, with their music. And while I was waiting for them, I noticed they were giving art classes, and I started taking art classes and having fun with it, you know, doing watercolor and painting and having fun. And then I started doing collage a few years ago, and I've been doing doing mostly collage now. It's a little easier than the watercolor. It's easy to carry around. And today, even, I went out to get some magazines to use <laughs> in the artwork. When the children were all raised, one of my best, one of my most interesting things was to go travel, and I took some, took some trips to Africa, and got interested in the, in, in African culture, and Af African people, and you know, wondering where my family came from originally, and so forth. So, in a number of the collages that I've done, I've included you know, dark-skinned people from, from Africa. And I think there's some in here, 
and also people from other parts. And as you can see, my interest is in them, in geography in the world, see, seeing the world and the peoples in the world. And so some of the collages have, you know, something about geography, something about the people. That's what this theme is. <laughs> oh, Gloves has a has a an art show at the Tabernacle every year, and I've been in that for the last 10 years. I had a show at the Featherstone Gallery in Martha's Vineyard, and I've had a couple of shows in New York. And the, when I was many, many years ago, they had an outdoor art show in Brooklyn Heights. And I was in that show for a couple of years. I like the outdoor art show and people have been, you know, look, coming by and buying the work and looking at it and so forth. It's fun. And I meet other artists. I've been in two, two outdoor art shows in Brooklyn regularly. One is the one that's in Brooklyn Heights, downtown Brooklyn, and the other one is in Bed-Stuy, around the park in Bed-Stuy, which was set up many, many years ago by many of the black artists. And at that one, I've been interested not only in showing my work, but in meeting some of the black artists and the things that they have been doing and showing. So Martha's Vineyard is a place I've spent many summers there after, when I first retired, I preferred traveling, which I love traveling. But in the last few summers, I spent uh, almost a whole summer on Martha's Vineyard with friends. And my sister um, passed away well, before she passed away, she left a little house that we, that my children had spent time with her on. She left it with Margaret. And when we outgrew that house because the family was growing bigger, Margaret decided she'd buy us, buy the family another house. So she bought the house on the Tabernacle grounds. It's called campgrounds. I had a friend whose name was Jeannie, Jeannie Guinier. Well, I used to walk with Jeannie every, pretty much every day when she was living. And we'd walk along the, uh, the Oak Bluffs Harbor and in, in, the mor in the early mornings, take our walks there. And I walked out to, I've been out to Gayhead a number of times and walked, walked with people around in, in Gayhead. And uh, now that, you know, Dini is gone, I usually take a walk by myself, and it's down also along the harbor or down Circuit Avenue in the beautiful areas to go to see the, go to see the sunset or the full moon or beautiful places like that. The fact that the children grew up and are doing all, all of them are make, making contributions to the world, that's, that's the main thing, to making contributions to society, not thinking only about themselves, but thinking about other people and how they can help other people, that's the main thing.